Hey guys, Rhett Weaver here with Interland Utah. Want to get with you really quick on what's happening with interest rates, what we're seeing, and what should be coming down the line. Obviously, we predicted May 10th. We were talking about that a lot. Since May 10th, there's been a lot of extra stuff going on in the market as far as announcements, inflation, and some of that other stuff that just hasn't been controlled quite yet. Um, a lot of it is just data being changed, to be very honest with you. The government's been able to come out and change data from the previous years which is really kind of screwing up as far as what we've been hoping with interest rates. But I promise you, this is all going to catch up. This is 2023. This is bank deposits versus money being moved into money markets. You can see here that banks are hurting really bad. People are pulling their money out. Deposits are down extremely, extremely, extremely low. And people are pulling their money and putting it into other places where they can get a better rate of return. And so as the deposits move, these banks really start to create a lot of pressure. Two things this week that happened, um, you know, that I, I just don't think pay attention to it. I'm going to show you some graphs here in a minute as to why. But first off, James Bullard yesterday basically spoke, said he wants two or three more rate hikes. We know, we know that the Jerome Powell also came out and said at this last announcement that there's probably no way that they can do it because it's putting way too much stress on the financial system. The problem with this, though, is we have a guy named Jamie Demon from JP Morgan that it's in his best interest if these banks are obviously failing and he's part of this whole Federal Reserve stuff. So he wants to see six, you know, the Fed fund rate go to six or 7% because JP Morgan has been obviously gobbling up all these extra banks here. And the result of this is their banks got a lot bigger, their bank has got a lot better. And so some of this is really selfish on what the Feds are doing right now and kind of the, the financial gain that they're making themselves, which is interesting to me that the, you know, this is basically being allowed. So hopefully going into the month of June, hopefully going into the month of July, inflation has been coming down month over month, every single month. And we're just waiting for something to really hit here to really start sending rates kind of down south or start moving south and really start to get a little bit lower here. And I think we're going to start seeing that obviously, you know, over the summer months and late summer as that kind of comes in. Let me show you a few more data points that I kind of want to touch. This was, uh, you know, something that came out as, as you know, as you can read here, reasons for renting by the year. So the number one problem as to why people rent is because they believe that they need to have at least 20% for a down payment. So a lot of this is education in the market that people just aren't being educated enough that, you know, they need as little as 5% or 3.5% down. A lot of times people just look at kind of that rent payment and think, hey, I'd rather, uh, you know, this rent payment's a little bit cheaper than what I can get out of there for a house. And so I'm going to go ahead and rent instead of, you know, kind of taking a look at a house. So some of this just needs to be a lot of education. One other thing that, you know, one other graph that just ba basically came out is, you know, why people are living with their parents or staying at home. And the big majority of that was really just to save a lot of money between the ages, um, you know, help them financially, kids, things like that. So a lot of this is we just got to get out there. We got to educate people as far as what's happening with the market, the shortage of homes, what's happening with interest rates what's going to happen as soon as interest rates fall. Here's something that you know we kind of want to see in the market that we believe is going to be a little bit of a hammer, a little bit of a turn here. And I want to show you this on the graph really fast. Anytime that we see this movement over here on the right hand side, what I mean by this is it means that you know the day started out really bad and then it kind of made some gains. Each day here we've been losing. We've been losing for quite a while now. Every single day the market's been getting quite a bit worse. But what you can see here is these candlesticks are getting longer and longer and longer, which means the market's reacting to a lot of this, basically pleading and stating that this is going to make a turn. Um, you can kind of see it here that it was happening a little bit and then finally it made a turn, happens again, makes a turn. And so we're kind of on that brink to where some news in the market could make this turn and we could see this go the other direction and then we could just continue to see this fall. So, you know, jobs reports going to have a big, a big factor in this and a couple of other big reports coming down the line here. We just need to sit patient. Shelter is finally caught up that we preached about for a really long time. Um, and a lot of other things inside of this market are catching up as well. So be patient. We know that some of the data that they moved from 2022 has been put towards the end of this year. But the number one thing that we've got to do is get out there and educate people as far as how much they need for a down payment. And the reality of getting into a home right now, what it looks like in the next 12 to 24 months as far as refinancing. A lot of this is selling people on the dream of home ownership and letting people know about the data over the last two years of what the market was like when we had lower rates with a house shortage and what happened to those homes. So we know this is one of those perfect times and we've been preaching this for a couple months now.
to go out and purchase a property because we know moving forward for the future, there's only equity to be gained here, which means a lot of people are going to make a lot of money on homes again, because simply there's not enough homes being built right now. And this is just a supply and demand issue. Let us know if you have any questions. Feel free to reach out anytime.